day everyone. Welcome to our devotion this Tuesday morning and we're going to continue from where we left off yesterday and I realize we haven't looked at any specific scriptures so far and I would like to obviously spend time in God's word and let God's word speak to us. I'm really trying to set the stage for this whole uh, study I guess you could call it on what we are calling turbulence in our lives and so uh, forgive me if there's not a lot of scripture that we are referencing right now but certainly we will as we go forward. Um, perhaps just to say right from the outset in terms of discouragement or despair there, there are four facts about despair uh, uh, in turbulent times. Uh, the first, and all of these are quite obvious, but I, I just need to kind of lay the, the, the groundwork for what we're going to be dealing with. First of all, despair is universal. Uh, discouragement or despair strikes at everybody. There's, there's no one, not even Jesus, who is immune to discouragement or despair. Um, we all will face it at, at one or other stage in our lives, and I'm sure we 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 do and uh, so that is not something new to us secondly it is not a respecter of persons whether you young or old whether you rich or poor whether you educated or uneducated uh, whether you're advantaged or disadvantaged whether you're a believer or unbeliever um, we all get discouraged it's it's certainly not a respecter of persons which is perhaps why the the psalmists were were so vocal in saying, Lord, why do the wicked prosper? In thinking that if you're righteous, you, you shouldn't be going through turbulent times. Thirdly, it is recurring. In other words, you know, once you've been discouraged, uh, you know, once doesn't make you immune from being discouraged again. And we all know that we can be discouraged at different times of our lives for different things, different reasons. And then fourthly, it's highly contagious. And this is perhaps the the most discouraging thing of all is that our own discouragement can cause others to be discouraged and that is why um, the kind of negativity that we often uh, have uh, in 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 the reporting and the false uh, uh, media the fake news that we are encountering day by day can have that effect of making us more and more discouraged and sure there's a lot of truth in the media but there's also a lot of false media and it's the false media that thrives on making people more and more discouraged and of course then we get all these conspiracy theories about what's going on and we just don't know where the truth really lies then there are four symptoms of those who are discouraged and again i i I mention these because they are things that we ought to look out for in ourselves, especially in the turbulent times in which we live. And the first, and all of these are dangerous, the first is to compromise. And a classic example of this we find in John 18, when, when uh, the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, and Peter drew his sword and struck the high priest's servant, uh, cutting off his ear. And in doing that, Peter was not only compromising his authority as one of Jesus' disciples, but he was compromising the, all the teaching that he had received from Jesus himself. I mean, everything Jesus had taught about, you know, loving your neighbor as yourself, uh, loving your enemies, doing good to those who hate you, non-violence, non-resistance. In that moment, he, he disregarded. Instead, he chose to take matters into his own hands, and that didn't work. He lowered his standards, but not his expectations. And when he attacked the high priest's servant, his expectations were still unrealistically high. But his obedience to the word of God had dropped several notches. The danger you see is that when you, you give in to despair or discouragement, you kind of begin to cling to unrealistic expectations. And you'll do anything to, to make them happen. And more often than not, even if that means lowering your own standards to do it, you kind of say, well, well, who cares? I don't really care. Uh, and that results in compromise, compromise of our, our faith and our witness. And we have to be so careful of that. The, the second symptom of discouragement is 
is of course the fact that we we can so easily quit uh, discouragement leads ultimately to despair and like Peter who denied knowing Jesus um, we read that he despaired and he, he went out and he wept bitterly he was ready to quit and had it not be for uh, Jesus reinstating him and reaffirming him perhaps Peter would have quit and so that is always the danger of discouragement or despair is that we just want to give up we kind of want to end it all and and that is not God's way as we'll see in the many examples we'll be looking at over time the the third symptom is to withdraw in John 20 19 we read in the same day that evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you when a person finds him or herself in the depths of despair they they kind of become like recluses they stay at home they become un uninvolved they withdraw into their shell of self-pity as long as the disciples were hiding behind locked doors they were unable to to accomplish the mandate that had been given to them to go into all the world and preach the good news to to all unbelievers when we withdraw we become completely unproductive we become listless and you know we don't we don't really add any value we're not able to accomplish the task for which god has called us it affects the way we live it affects the, the way we serve God. We can so easily become just apathetic. And that creates distance, not only between us and God, but, 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 but between us and, and others. And so we compromise, we quit, we withdraw, and then lastly, we, we escape. Uh, I guess this is the most dangerous of all. Uh, those who are, are filled with despair and discouragement, uh, often look for something else to to alleviate the the pain of their discouragement and despair for Peter of course it was fishing he he wanted to return to something that he was familiar with I heard of a successful businessman who was being interviewed by Larry King on Larry King live and he was asked what the secret was to his success and the man said a bad marriage and Larry King was kind of incredulous and asked him what he meant by that. And he said, I couldn't stand being at home with that woman. So I poured every working minute into my work until I stumbled upon success. So I guess my question to you this morning is, what do you, you do to escape the pain of discouragement? Maybe it is your work. Maybe it's some other recreational activity. Maybe it's an insatiable need to kind of accumulate more and more stuff. Maybe it's an overindulgence in, in food or sensual pleasure or some other addiction like alcohol. These alternatives only complicate the problem. We may pursue them in order to escape reality, but we forget that we cannot conquer our problems. If we can't conquer our problems within the, within the real world, we'll never conquer them outside of it Joseph Stoll is a writer and this is what he writes grinning and bearing it will offer resolve but no solution getting mad only brings more grief and anguish as we walk through life like a fight looking for a place to happen getting even starts wars that escalate and sap our resources as bitterness eats away at our souls withdrawal creates additional conflict as we end up living in a ghetto of one watching from the sidelines as the world races by end quote so four symptoms we compromise we quit we withdraw or we escape and we're going to look at some examples in scripture pretty much ask ourselves the question as to whether we we find those symptoms in in any of the the great men and women of god who we read in the scriptures 
And so I pray that by way of introduction, we would have set the stage for looking at some of the examples. And we've looked at some of these before. Uh, last year, we looked at a couple. And we'll always be going back to them because, you know, God's word is timeless. And we will always find encouragement by, by revisiting some of the scriptures that we may have seen before. But for now, let's just bow in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for your word again. And Thank you that even in the turbulent times in which we live, that we can look at those who have been through similar times in Scripture. We understand the, some of the, 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 the facts around despair and discouragement. We understand that it is universal, that it is recurring. We understand too some of the symptoms that people so often will compromise and or quit or, or withdraw or escape and do other things that will somehow alleviate the pain of their turbulence. And we pray, Lord God, that we may recognize some of these things in ourselves and that we will not fall prey to them, but that, Lord, we will be able to understand the causes and be able to address those causes by looking at your word. And so bless us as we go into this day and as we continue to look at this this study of, of dealing with turbulence in our lives. And we ask this in and through your precious name. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you again tomorrow. Bye.